All right, hello YouTube, and welcome back to APCS Shorts, uh, doing the Java exercises, the odd exercises in our textbook. Um, we created a, in Lab 7 a C7X7, and in there we're going to create a point class. Now the idea here is that we're really aiming after making a polygon class, which is an array list of points. Now we could use java.awt.point2d, but that's no fun. Let's make our own class, okay? And let's make it a robust class. It's got to have accesses for every uh, private instance field. It's got to have a two string. Let's see, what else do I want? I want a two string. I want an equals, dot equals. <coughs> I want to compare to all of that fun stuff, okay? All right, let's start with the tester just to see what's going on. I'm not going to put comments in here just to save time. I think we have comments on the code that's uh, linked with this, okay? So public class uh, point tester. I always start here to figure out how to what I need in my class. I'm trying to design the point class. So let's start with the main public static void main string array args. Am I using any input from args? Nah. Okay. And in main, since we're testing the point class, let's construct uh, a point. Let's see. So point foo equals, let's say, new point, and how do you define a point? X and Y coordinates, right? So how about 2, comma 3? And we're going to we're gonna do a compare to and a dot equals, so let's have two points. How about point bar equals new point 3, 2? Let's say. Now these are different points, but the, depending on how you define dot equals, they might be the same point. How would you define that equals? When are two points equals? Simply the same x and the same y? You could. That's boring. The same two string? Yeah, yeah. Let's make it more interesting. What if it's the same distance from the origin? What if one point is greater than another point if it's a greater distance from the origin? Haha. -ha. That's interesting. That's different. Let's try that. All right, so first though, let's print out these guys. All right? So let's do let's do it like a two string. So for to do a two string, let's do system dot out dot print line foo. Well, I might as well label it quote foo equals quote plus. Okay. And system dot out dot print line <coughs> uh, bar equals string plus well let's stringify this bar alrighty so let's get that much working okay so we need a constructor and we need a two string right so let's do that let's go over here public class point let's start whoops let's start with the constructor public or not public we're using it in another class main in, in the main method in fact uh, void or not not it's the uh, the point class, the point file, the name of the file is the point, the name of the class is point, the name of the constructor is point. There you go. Now, don't forget the parameter list. We're putting in an x value and a y value, right? So, let's put that in there. How about we allow that to be doubles? All right, so double x, double y. So, we're abstracting a point simply by describing its coordinates, right? All right, so let's do that. Now, remember what a constructor does. Whoops, what happened there? Um, it, it, it initializes the private instance fields. It stores these input parameters, right, if you have them. And if you have any private instance fields that are actually objects of another class, like a string or something, uh, you should construct it here, like a rectangle object or something, right? So how about we just say um, this.x is, is where we store x. That's the input. And this.y this that y is the private instance field, and that y is the input right here. This y is this y. So don't forget, let's define the private instance fields, the private uh, variables, private uh, double x and private double y. Now you remember what happens if you try to print out an object without a two-string method defined, right? Most of the uh, classes in Java have two strings defined, so you can print any object uh, from a, a that you construct in Java, and it'll print out usually the name of the 
the class that it's a member of and whatever is in the uh, private instance fields. Let's see what happens if I just do this. All right, so I'm going to shell out. I'm going to shush in. Yeah, man. Shush into the server. Terminal wise. With the shell. All right, so I'm going to cd apcs uh, shorts uh, lab 7 c7x7. There you go. And there's my files. Point .java, point tester .java. So if we java c point tester .java, oops, what do I do? Oh, yeah, silly. That's ridiculous. Let's move this up a little bit. Alrighty, that was what? Yeah, don't do that. I'm used to putting that in the header comments. I didn't do header comments, that's why. Alrighty, let's try that again. Okay, good. And then Java point tester. And what did it print out? It printed out the the class that foo is a member of, it's a point object, right? And the hexadecimal address in RAM where it's stored. That's not what I want. I want a description of the point, like maybe parentheses, two comma three parentheses, something like that. Or the way Java does it, point, square bracket, x equals, comma, y equals, something like that, right? So let's do the two-string class. Now, the two-string method. Now, the two-string method we're overloading because we're inheriting it from the object class. So it has to go public, string, it returns a string, two-string. And you can define this any which way you want. I'm going to do it this way. It's going to return a string that's like, uh, you know, parentheses x comma y. All right, so how about quote, parentheses, quote, <clears throat> plus x plus, whoops, plus, quote, comma, um, yeah, quote. All right, so this is a string. Then this isn't really adding. This is, whoops, concatenating. So this becomes a string, plus that's a string, plus, the plus again is concatenating, um, y, plus, quote, close parentheses, quote, semicolon. Now let's see what happens. So, Java see that, Java that, and that's what I want, okay? So you got your two string overloaded from the object class. Alrighty. How about, let's see, how about implementing the comparable? interface. Let's do that. How about if I, all right, I want to, I want to see if these two strings are equal, right, in the tester. So let's do something like if foo dot equals, we'll have to write an equals method, we're overloading from the object class, uh, bar, then say so. System dot out dot print line uh, quote foo equals equals bar. That's a joke. You're not using equals equals to compare objects, are you? That's funny. Ha ha. Okay. Else system dot out dot print line foo does not equal to, again, we're not using that to compare, uh, to find out if they're not equals. It would be not, parentheses, foo, dot equals, bar, right? Okay. Anyway, bar, I guess that's too funny. So let's write an equals method. All right. Now, typically, the equals method is based on if the two strings are the same for two different point objects, or if compare to returns zero. So why don't we write a compare to method to do that? All right, here we go. So, point class. So, I'm going to implement or implements imp, implements the comparable interface. Now, the comparable interface, you can say what type, what class type you're comparing, points in this case. Okay? Uh, by the way, this is optional. We're extending, so extends object. I'm just going to put it in here for fun, but you don't have to write that. That's where we get two string and dot equals. Now we're going to do compare to. Now we just said, what makes one point larger than another point? We're just going to define that as being farther from the origin. So how about we create a distance method? Now I'm not using this in main, so I'm going to make this a private helper method. Private double 
distance. All right, and I just want to create, uh, calculate the distance from the origin for this one particular point. So return math.pow of uh, x times x, or math.pow x comma 2, right? Plus y times y, or math.pow y comma 2. And that's the distance formula from the origin. Delta x squared plus delta y squared. Okay. Now that's a private helper method I'm using in the compare to method. Now here's the typical way of writing compare to. Now the signature line for the compare to method in the comparable interface is defined as public int compare to. That's a return an int. Uh, like this, proper case. Uh, point other, since I already know that I'm using comparable point, right? So point other. Alrighty. <clears throat> All right, so what do I do? Well, I'm going to I'm going to compare the distance between this point and the other point, right? So this dot distance minus other dot distance. Now this is a reserved word. Other is just the parameter name I made up, right? Other dot distance. And they're both using the distance formula, right? The difference will give you if it's bigger or not. So if this distance minus the other distance are, returns zero, let's say they're equal. If it returns a positive, let's say this is greater than other. And if it returns a negative, let's say this is less than other. And that's what compare to does. It returns a negative when this is less than the other, a uh, negative int, and a positive int if it's greater, and zero if it's not. Okay, but the problem is that distance returns a double. So what are we going to return? Not that. How about if we take this whole thing and cast it to an int? So if they are equal, <clears throat> you're going to get zero. And if they're not, you're going to get an int. And if you're going to get a positive int, if this dot distance is greater than other dot distance, and you're going to need a negative int. Now, there is a little tolerance here within epsilon, right? Uh, two, you can't compare two doubles like this. If they're actually equal and you subtract them, you might have some round off error and not get zero, like a very small, I would say 0 .001. But if you int that, you're going to get zero. So you're going to get some things that are equal just because they're close to being equal? Yeah, it's OK. All right, and now the point is we can use, uh, overload the equals method. Now, equals is a predicate method, so public boolean returns true or false. Equals, now remember, we're uh, overloading this or we're inheriting this from the object class, so we have to write the exact signature line from the object class, and it goes like this. I don't think that it matters what this is called, but this has to be object, okay? So very typical of the dot equals method, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do a little polymorphism, aren't you? Okay. So we're going to morph object to point because it's also a point. So how about we create a temporary local variable of point type, call it temp, equals, let's morph to point other. So other is an object, but it also happens to be a point. So now I can use point methods if I want to. Okay like the compared to method I just wrote. Okay, so uh, when should you return true in dot equals? When compared to return zero. All right, so let's do that. Return uh, this dot compare to uh, temp. If that's zero, you're gonna return true. If that's not zero, you're gonna return false. By the way, it's also typically done this way. <clears throat> you could return this dot two string dot equals um, temp dot two string. So if the two strings are the same, we're comparing the private instance fields are the same, and that's pretty much what you want. So you could have written that instead. And uh, that compares exactly the x's and the y's, so there's no tolerance there. So that might be preferable. I don't know. So that's a very typical way of writing compared to with this, uh, returning a difference. That's a very typical way of uh, implementing compared to and overloading dot equals. Um, either use the dot equals of the string class, 
and comparing the two strings, or use compare to. Uh, whoops, I spelled that wrong. Bing. All right, so notice what I don't have in main. Let's save that. I don't have distance, and I don't have compare to. But if I do dot equals, it uses compare to, and you compare to uses distance, so I'm testing everything. Isn't that convenient? That's nice. All right, so let's do, do it. Okay, so let's Java C this. What did I mess up? Oh, what did I do? Java.lang.math cannot be applied to double. Okay. Oh, what am I saying? Sorry, I went crazy. <clears throat> I'm doing the distance form. Squirt, square root. Square root of x squared plus y squared. Or square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared, and delta x is x minus 0, and delta y is y minus 0. Sorry, messed that up. That was weird. Okay, let's try that again. <clears throat> okay, and Java it, and they're equal. Now remember, we said it was the same distance from the origin. And what is it? Rad 9 plus 4, rad 13, and rad 13, right? Okay, let's make it not equal. Let's say, oh, I don't know, let's go to the tester and make this uh, 0, 3. So it's 3 units away, and it's rad, what did we say, 13 units away there? So it should be not equal to. All right, let's see. Java C that. Java that. And there, ooh, what I do? What I do? Uh-oh. That's strange. How come they're both giving me equals? What happened? Did I save this? Yes. Did I Java C this? I did. Now that's weird. That didn't happen in class. Well, this always happens. Sorry, YouTube. <clears throat> what I do weird? Other that distance, this that distance, the difference is zero would give you. Hmm. Wait, let me check my code here. There was one other little thing we didn't do, by the way, that's not affecting this problem, but you should also have, not only should you have a compare to if you're implementing the comparable class, and a dot equals overloaded, and a dot two string if you're extending the object class, but for each um, uh, private instance field, you should have an access, a very basic access, so let's throw that in while I'm thinking about it. Public, double, in case you need it, we're going to need it in when we do the area problem in Polygon. So get x, return x, right? And public, we'll test this later. Double, it's not a big deal. Get y, return y. OK, just, just to make this robust, I'll call this a robust class, OK? It's got, oh, please excuse John the announcement. John Buglion, please call mm -hmm. the main office 2614. John Buglion, call the main office 2614. What did I do? I did something weird. Did I do something weird in the tester? If foo dot equals bar, return equals, otherwise return not equals. What the heck? Everything Java seed, right? We constructed that, we constructed that. Print line that, and we printed it was different, right? They're different. That's a distance of three, and that's a distance of rad 13. That's nowhere near equal. So it's not within tolerance. That shouldn't be the case. Let's make it really not equal. How about, I don't know, 30 and negative 10? I don't know, something insane. All right. Java see it. I saved it. Java see it. And Java it. And now they're not equal. Wow, that's weird. So my compared to returns true this close together. Rad 13 is, is bigger than rad 3. It's less than, I mean, bigger than 3, not, this is 3 units from the origin. It's uh, less than 4. Wow, that's a big tolerance. Holy cow. Well, I guess close enough. That's the idea. So anyway, we got everything that we need in the point class for the polygon class we're going to do next time. And then we might do the purse class, C2X2. We'll get to that. All right, so that's good for now. Bye-bye, YouTube.